Hey everybody, welcome to Wagered on Tilt. I am T and I wanted to do a quick video uh, that was for a request from a subscriber. So in this video, they were asking about how do you do a Poisson distribution and calculate probabilities from that kind of a table, but using a spread. So I came up with a quick and easy way to do this. The formula may seem a little complicated, but it's really not that bad. It's pretty simplistic. You can do this on any of your Poisson tables and it's really fast to spin up. Rather than using a bunch of complicated variables and if thens and switches and things like that, um, I just went ahead and said, hey, let's build out an expectations table. And then you basically are creating a picker and figure out which one do you want to use from the expectations table. So enough of this, let's go ahead and jump into the spreadsheet. Okay, so we are currently looking at a soccer model that we have gone ahead and demoed before in the past. However, for this one, we are looking at the Poisson distribution and trying to plug it into our actual spread that is provided by the book. So that way we can kind of monitor it and move it around as needed. So here it is based on a very basic and preset and predefined probability. There is no variable set within this one. So I went ahead and thought through how we could do this and the easiest way is going to be for creating like a chart to select from that honestly will be the easiest and most simple way to do this. So in order to do this, let's head over to the PDIST table and in here we have this spreads down here. So this is the probability for outcomes similar to the one above. However, I'm going to use this one for reference to try and figure out what are the probabilities for a spread to cover. First, what I did was I went ahead and created a section and I just labeled it as home. And then I went negative one, negative two, negative three, zero, one, two, three. The reason I did this is because for the formula to work, what it's gonna do is ingest a spread that you enter, and then it's gonna try and find the maximum value or the next maximum value. So what it will do is actually take the spread and find the match or the next level up. The reason for the next level up is that if you have a minus half point, that usually then needs to convert into the next level of a whole. The half points are only to prevent uh, pushes by the book. So here we have this. Now again, this ordering and sequence of negative one, negative two, negative three is because of the way the formula has to work. So you'll just have to kind of bear in mind when you're setting this up. Here, I've only taken it out to three. You could take it out to whatever number you want. If you're doing some kind of like hockey uh, Poisson distribution table, you could take it up to seven, 10, whatever you want. Um, again, remember Poissons are not great for things like football, um, unless you're doing like catches or something like that. It has to be something that moves in an incremental amount. Um, whereas in football, you can score seven, three, two, one, things like that. Doesn't work well for that. So here, um, I'm just using a little test example. So we have negative two. So what it is doing is it's gonna say, all right, our spread is this team minus two and a half. So let's go ahead and find that. Well, it's greater than negative two. And let's then move on to negative three, which is 48.82%, which it populates here. So for this list, this is pretty simplistic. All you're gonna do is say, if the home team had a minus one on the spread, sum up all the locations where they would win. So I would say, starting from two, here, 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 here. So let's go ahead and double click so we can see. So here, I um, this is an old test that I was running, so let's go ahead and clean up this data. So if we had the home team as negative one, we're actually gonna go ahead and clean this up. So negative one, so if you took one away from one, you'd have zero, that's a loss, right, as far as we're concerned. So we have that, and we'll add a comma. Then we have that, comma, that, comma, that, comma, that. And hit enter. And we do the same here. All right, so if we had negative two, so you take away two from that, that's a zero, that's a push. So we'd have to go at three, because then we'll still win one to zero. Four would be two to one, five would be two, and six would be three, five, that's four. So that's enter, and then same thing, negative three, we're down here, negative three, so three, comma, here, comma, here, comma, here, enter, make sure right. Um, where we're getting plus odds. Okay, so if this team playing were to be getting a minus two and a half, right? Again, you don't have half points, can't score that in soccer or any other sport that I know of. So you would have to then say, could they win by at least three, which is why we take it up to the next level. And that's what this does. It says, all right, well, you can't split this. So let's move it up to the next level and get those. So for this formula here, right now it is referencing this test cell. So for this, 
it is um, an if statement so that that way we know which way we need to do our math and look things up. So I'm going to say if G25, which is our test cell that's holding our test spread, is less than zero, then what I need to do is create an index on this. So it'll be index C25 to D31. Then I'm going to say match. And by us putting in true as the first parameter, it's going to say where basically this is holds true. And the next formula is our index range less than or equal to 25, uh, G25, which is our test spread, zero, which means it needs a perfect match. And I'm going to take this and put in the two. And then that's going to go ahead and make sure it finds it properly because it's going to find it in column two from our index. The other one then is that if it is not greater than, or I'm sorry, if it is not less than zero, we use an index on the same range. We say match, same range again, and then we're going to say if it's greater than or equal to G25, do a perfect match, and then again grab the value from 2. So as we see in here, if I change this around, 3, we go to the 89, if I go to 2.5, right, it's just going to stay there because it's rounding it. If I went to 2, it would change it, and, oops. and if I went to 7, it's going to break because we don't have 7 in here. But then I could say minus one and a half. I'd expect that one, and that's what we got. So now that we covered the basics of how this tool can work, we can go ahead and update our dashboard. So in order to do that, we're gonna to need to update where this reference cell is actually coming from. So let's go ahead and take a peek. So for the home, it is actually an H4. So let's come back in here, PDIST. You can double click on where G25 is, cut that value, head back to the dashboard, click the cell you want to reference, copy it, and then any place you see the G25 value, you'll just replace it. All right, so I think that's it. So 77%, which means that it should be, you know, 0.5 or 1, we'll double check, and it is. Now that we have that plugged in, and I were to change this to 2, I would expect to see my P distribution to change which it did, to 85.53, perfect. So now we wanna go ahead and update this. So the percentage chance to cover the spread, we are gonna just say equals, go to our P distribution sheet, point to this field, hit enter, and there you go. So then as this changes, right, you'll expect to see this change, and then we can change this based upon whatever our book is giving us, point, you know, 0 0.05, okay? Then the other one would be, you just do the same thing for the away team. You would come in here, write the same formula, right? Same information in here with the, the summing, right? Only you're going by the columns now instead of the rows. You would go ahead and write this same exact formula, only instead of referencing dashboard H4, you'll reference dashboard H3. And then you'll just update where this pointer is pulling from and you should have it all set. And then that way, when the spreads are moving around, you can actually update this, update your teams, and be getting the spreads as well, versus it being locked into a hard number. So like I said, that was it. It's not that complicated. It was relatively simple. Again, I only demoed the home version, but you'll just go ahead and duplicate the exact same thing I did, but with the away version. And then that way, you just plug it all in, and now as you change your book line, you should expect to see the probabilities change along with uh, the teams. And then that way, as you're adjusting quickly, right, the calculations rerun, everything gets pulled in fresh to the dashboard, and you're not locked into the, you know, standard minus a half, plus a half, or minus one and a half, plus one and a half. You're not locking in those values anymore because you're using an expectation table to figure it out for you. If you have any questions on this, feel free to reach out. Um, I'm always helping people on Twitter at wagered on tilt. Um, I am also willing to help you through the comments. I often will respond to comments within a day or so and give you insights on how to fix things if stuff's breaking or it's not making sense. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. That allows YouTube to know that it is an important video and helpful, and hopefully this information will bubble up for other sports bettors so that they can improve their betting charts. If you have any content you would like to see, please let me know. You can reach out on Twitter. You can also drop a comment in the YouTube video. I love to help and create content and I really like creating content that you want to see. 
because then that way I know I'm providing the best information that I have for you and I'm not talking about models and things like that that you just don't really care about. If you do like the content that I am providing, uh, please feel free to subscribe. That way you are notified as soon as my next video is available. So that is it. The only thing other than that is happy wagering.